What's good everyone? Today I will show you how you can improve your render times. I will show you my tips how I render complex scenes in just a few hours and I will show you the why behind the what. At the end I will also share an important tip to sum it up. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so I open up a complex Blender file with displacement, cloth and everything and let's get straight into the preferences. So go to edit and select preferences. In the preferences go to the system menu and then select the right render devices. So if you have a RTX card, select optics and then here select your graphics card. And if you have a GTX card, like an older one, a 1080 or whatever, select CUDA. You can also select the CPU, but I like to don't select it so that I can use my computer for other stuff while rendering. Okay, let's get to the render settings, probably the most important part of this video. So first of all, make sure that GPU is selected if you have one, of course, and then let's go to the sampling. So for the viewport, I just wanna have it as fast as possible. And so I keep the samples at 16. And for the denoisers, I select optics because this one is the fastest. Then for the render, um, I like to keep my samples low because mm -hmm. I try to reduce the render time to about between 10 seconds and one minutes per frame. So yeah, normally I use 128 frames. Okay, then for the denoise, I like to use the open image denoise for the render because it's just a little bit more accurate than the optics one. Also select noise threshold and put in a value of 0 0.01 so Blender doesn't render anything you can see anyways in the end result. Okay, next continue to the light path. And normally Blender has a max bounce of 12 on everything. So I will put that down to four. This just helps with the render time in general and you don't see a big difference between 12 and four, like visually, but in case of render time, it makes a huge difference. And, but I wouldn't go below four because like when you put in three or two, it starts to look ugly and unreal. So yeah, um, keep this at least at four if you are working with complex materials like glass or metal or reflections or volumes or whatever, you have to maybe crank those a little bit up. But yeah, just play around with those. Then if you want, you can enable fast GI approximation, which makes it way faster, but this also comes at a cost and your render will look way worse. Um, for some use cases it works, but most of the time, if you wanna make realistic renders, keep this fast GI approximation unchecked. Let's continue to the performance tab. Um, here is probably one of the most important checkbox if you're rendering animations. And this is persistent data. This makes that Blender only um, calculates some stuff on the first frame and then it remembers it for the next few frames you render. So you don't have to recalculate everything again for every frame and this can save up to 10 to 20 seconds every frame, which make a huge difference when you render like 250 frames. Okay, just a quick break. This video is brought to you by my own Patreon. Make sure to check it out and support my tutorials. You will get additional tutorials, project files, exclusive voting power, early access to videos, or even a one-on-one -on -one hangout with me. I also have a Discord server you can join for free or access to private channels by subscribing to my Patreon. Right now, I have released a scene breakdown of this animation. The links are in the description. Thanks for staying with me and let's continue. Okay, so last but not least, let's get into the export settings. So first of all, choose the right aspect ratio and then you can decrease or increase the quality like the, the pixels by playing around with this slider. Maybe keep it lower if you just want to make a test render. Okay, so let's continue to the output settings. Um, for the file format, I would use PNGs or if you want to do color grading or everything like that, or compositing, make sure to use OpenXR and then DWAA lossy. So the file size stays approximately the same as the PNG sequence. And then maybe if you have a transparent background, also choose RGBA. If not, you can just leave it like it is. And OpenXR is great because you can store more color data in it. And if you want to make it brighter or darker in post, it's way easier without overexposing or underexposing certain things. So make sure to use P 
PNG or open EXR. And the reason why I wouldn't render it to a video file like an MP4 mm -hmm. file is because when you render crashes, the whole video file gets corrupted. But if you have like PNG sequence or open EXR, you can just continue the render where you started. And also, if you maybe have a glitch in your render or maybe just 10 frames that don't look right, you can just replace those 10 frames in the image sequence. And this can save you a huge amount of time because you don't have to re-render the whole animation again. To sum it up, as I already promised, a last important thing to know is that when you want to increase the quality of your render, you can either increase the value, like the resolution value to 4K or whatever you want, or you can increase the samples to get less noise. So what you have to know about Blender is that the denoiser works better with higher resolution. And if you want to render fast, denoising is one of the most important steps. As an example, here are two renders of the exact same scenes, and they also took the same time to render. So on the left, we have 512 samples and a 2K resolution. And on the right, we have a 128 samples and the 4K resolution. And as you can see, when we zoom in, you get way more details on the 4K resolution than on the 2K resolution with more samples. So this is really helpful to know when you like still have some render time left and you can increase the quality, first increase the resolution and then increase the samples. I will do more tutorials in the future, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss those. And also like the video if you liked it and dislike it if you don't. And make sure to give feedback in the comments or if you have any questions, just leave them there and I will reply to everyone. So yes, have a great rest of the week and enjoy your weekends. Bye, guys.